The following video demonstrates the initiation of adaptive support ventilation from the standby screen. Now I'm selecting a new patient right now and it's already selected adult patient male. I'm changing the height to 174 centimeters and this is a patient that's 5 foot 9 inches and the ideal body weight is 70 kilograms. I'm going to go ahead to go to modes. ASV is already selected. And I'm going to go ahead and confirm it to get to my additional settings. First I select a percent minute ventilation. And my patient's a normal patient, no pathology. So I want the ventilator to provide 100% minute ventilation support. Additionally, I'm going to change the oxygen and you just change this to the patient's status. I can set PEEP, uh, trigger, this is for my spontaneous breaths, um, a ETS is the expiratory trigger sensitivity, it determines when my uh, spontaneous breaths end, and a P ramp, which is rise time. Under additions, I can select TRC, or otherwise known as automatic tubing compensation, and I can preset my alarms before I even put it on the patient. So I'm just going through and selecting my limits for my high pressure limit. The high pressure limit is very important. It limits on how high the pipe pressure can titrate. And in adaptive support ventilation, the pressure will only go up to 10 centimeters of water below my high pressure alarm setting. So if you have the pressure setting at 40, it's going to only allow the inspiratory pressure to get up to 30. And I can also set in a high tidal volume limit right here. When everything's uh, appropriate, you can go ahead and you can start the mode of ventilation. And here is ASV right now. What's nice about the G5 screen, I can make it very user friendly. And I'm going to set it up for my monitoring where I actually have the ASV graph or the least work of breathing graph which shows the targets what the machine is targeting uh, the least work of breathing pattern what the patient's currently doing versus what the ventilator is trying to target at this time